It's massive, it's heavy, and it's offensively expensive, but in this video we are going to talk about the Nikkor Z 58mm f 0.95S Noct Lens. Nikon states that this top of the S line manual focus with an f 0.95 maximum aperture will unlock the full potential of the Z mount. Unfortunately, unlocking the full potential of the Z mount will cost you a cool $8,000. I want to make it clear that I did not get this lens sent to me from Nikon. I actually rented it and I used my own money. When Nikon announced this, I was legitimately curious about what this lens would do and what the performance would be like. So it's been on my list to rent for a while now. I finally got several weeks to use it. And so I want to share a little bit of that with you today. But first I want to give a shout out to our sponsor who are the awesome folks over at Wine Country Camera. Wine Country Camera produces the best filter holder system available. In fact, it is the only filter holder system with a workflow for combining a circular polarizer, ND filters, and graduated filters and making adjustments without ever disturbing critical focus. Their Blackstone filters use vapor deposition coating techniques and fire polished shot ultra white glass that are designed for high resolution detail without the color shift that you find in many neutral density filters. This system uses step up rings to attach to any lens and for wider angle lenses with no filter threading they have a 150 millimeter system with custom designed lens attachments. This is the system for serious landscape artists. Right now, you can use the link in the description to save 20% off of anything in the entire store by using offer code AOP on checkout. Once again, that offer code is AOP, and I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Wine Country Camera for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. It's really easy to want to draw a comparison between this lens and the Zeiss Otis series. Now, the Zeiss Otis series are a group of lenses that had no design constraints, including price. So they're all rather large. They're all manual focused. They come in F mount or Canon E. EF mount, so they are DSLR lenses, and they are also expensive, but this lens is completely different. The Zeiss Otis series were all designed with maximum resolution and sharpness and performance wide open. This lens focuses in, no pun intended, but it focuses in on extreme wide aperture. This is actually interesting because this is something that using a mirrorless will open up possibilities with. If you're familiar with Nikon's lens lineup over the years, the widest aperture lenses they've ever made are f1.2. A lot of that has to to do with the lens mount and when you have an F mount you have to have space for the mirror box so it's a much longer distance between the rear element of the lens and the focal plane than what you get with mirrorless it is much closer one of the advantages of having this much shorter flange distance is that you can create lenses that have much wider apertures and that's what the Noct is set out to do another thing historically about F mount lenses particularly the older manual focus lenses from the 70s and 80s is that generally you had to stop down just a little bit to increase the lens to its peak performance. In other words, wide open, you didn't have a whole lot of contrast across the frame, and just stopping it down maybe even a third of a stop, maybe even a stop, would increase that contrast. It also increased your sharpness, your vignetting starts to go away. This has changed a lot with modern lens design, and I think this lens certainly shows you what you can do with modern lens design and this crazy wide aperture of f0.95. This lens has excellent contrast and sharpness wide open. You do have a little bit of vignette Yetting, and we'll talk about some of the flaws in a second, and this can be fixed in post-production. I actually like that Nikon allow you as the user to decide how much vignetting you want on the lens. So this is the type of lens that is designed with absolutely no restrictions in terms of weight, autofocus, size, price, and I'm pretty sure that the design team was given complete freedom when they were building this lens. Now the Zeiss Otis, as I mentioned, was about optical perfection and resolution. This lens is about optical perfection also, but at extreme extreme apertures. Now, as I mentioned, the Noct is massive. It features 17 elements in 10 groups. There are four extra low dispersion elements and three aspherical elements. Now, the elements feature Nikon's nano crystal coating, Arneo coating, and the front element is fluorite coated. There are 11 aperture blades for maintaining a circular bouquet when you stop down. This is actually really useful because F0.95 has such a shallow depth of field, particularly when your subject is close to the lens that a lot of times you do want to stop down to about f1.4, f1.8, just to get a little more depth of field in there. And when you do, you're going to maintain the circular quality of the bouquet. It's really quite nice. Now, I tested this lens in a variety of situations. I did some studio work with a tripod. I even did some street photography at night when I was in New York City. You really have to understand this lens to get the best results, and you're going to earn every shot. There's no autofocus, and it is extremely heavy, weighing in at over four pounds. Now, make no mistake, I I 
blew a lot of shots on this lens, particularly when I was shooting street photography. The depth of field is so shallow, it takes a lot of getting used to, and it's going to really challenge your accuracy and ability to manual focus. Focus throw is also exceptionally long with this focus ring. It's designed for precision, so when you move, you're able to do it in just micro increments. But moving from, let's say, infinity focus to a much closer distance takes a few turns, and if, particularly when you're shooting street photography, you're just going to miss shots because it takes a while to get this lens down to focus. But when you do connect, it does look fantastic. Optically, you've got a beautiful bouquet that is contrasted with a really good sharpness wide open. Now, this is part of the look. It does have the swirly bouquet, which some people are going to love and others not so much. I found the best results with this lens to my eyes being medium distance, where your subject is around 10 to 20 feet from the camera. This is where you're going to get the look, so to speak. So you're going to have areas that are out of focus. You're going to have your subject that you've got in focus extremely sharp. You're going to have a nice vignetting around it. There definitely is a look with this lens. So let's talk about vignetting for a second, because Nikon is one of those camera manufacturers that builds corrections into the lens profile when you bring something into Lightroom. You also see this in Fujifilm. There are some others. I actually like the fact that Nikon left vignetting alone because as I mentioned earlier it can be part of the look. You do have a pretty serious light fall off when it's wide open at f0.95. As you stop down this starts to go away and it pretty much cleans up at f2.8 so you don't have any. The other thing is you are going to notice that in some extreme examples there is some chromatic aberration in particular purple fringing and I do want to note how extreme this example is. What you're seeing here is the sun going down. I used a 10 stop neutral density filter to use this and you see a little bit of purple fringing and a lot of people tend to freak out when lens has purple fringing. This is correctable in any raw editor so it's not something that bothers me. Other than those two flaws and I would consider that vignetting is probably not a flaw and a look that you might want to incorporate. I think this lens is just about one of the best that I've ever used. When I mentioned you stop down and you start to lose some of those imperfections so for instance it's going to clean up chromatic aberration definitely cleans up vignetting. This is one of the best 1.8 f2.8 lenses, even f1.4, that I have ever ever used. It is insanely good. Now, speaking of neutral density, this lens is extremely bright. When I was in New York, I decided somehow that it was a good idea to go down to Times Square, which was way too bright to be shooting in. All these were done wide open in Times Square, and I did use a three-stop neutral density filter. But by far, my favorite application in this lens is for really low light situations. You get absolutely incredible results, and your ISO is going to be like around 100 for most of these shots. It's really pretty incredible incredible. So you're maintaining the fidelity of the image without having to add a lot of gain to things. On the other hand, shooting in daylight is really challenging if you want to shoot wide open. All of the shots that you're looking at that were done on the street were done with a three-stop neutral density filter that I just kind of left on the lens. Now, this particular day was overcast. If the sun was out, I probably would have needed to move up to a six-stop neutral density filter. So bear that in mind if you want to use this lens, is that you are limited with the Z cameras in terms of shutter speed. It only goes so high, so you're going to have to use a filter to bring the light down if you want to shoot wide open. Now, another interesting feature on the Noct is the minimum focus distance is about 18 inches, so you can get really close in on your subject, plus it's a 58 millimeter lens. So if you want to shoot wide open, this becomes really challenging as the depth of field is just paper thin at close distances, and it becomes selective focus photography. Now, this is clearly a top of the line lens, and optically it is simply fantastic. I was very pleased with the results that I got. As I mentioned, there is a learning curve to understanding how to use this lens when it's going to look at its best and how to become rather quick with it. But once you start getting that down, it really is very unique. There's nothing else out there like it, and it's just an unbelievable performer. So my favorite shots that I did on this camera were the night stuff that I did that was essentially street photography, which is interesting because in the heritage of wide aperture lenses at f0.95 makes me think of when Leica released the Noctilux in 1966. And back then, you have to remember in the late 60s, film speeds were not as high as they are today. So if you're shooting in extreme low light for reportage or street photography, you're going to either have to push your film speed. And even then, if it's dark enough, the whole idea behind this was to get really clean images and you are sacrificing that depth of field to get it. Now, I think when you bump up to the present day, I think the implications for the knock lens from Nikon is much different. We have clean high ISO settings now and it's 
really not the same problem that that was in the 60s. So we're going for a look. And believe me, the Nikon Noct delivers. It is also important to note that this lens is not for everyone. If you're not a big fan of that wide open, dreamy, swirly bouquet, shallow depth of field look, this lens is not for you. If you like to stop down to around f5.6 and you prefer a sharper looking image, I'm going to be honest with you. I did some side by side comparisons between this lens and the regular 50 millimeter f1.8. There is a huge difference until you get down to about f5.6. And at that point, they really don't look that much different. And I think that is more of a testament to the 50 millimeter f1.8 than it is an insult to the knock. That 50 millimeter f1.8 is a $600 lens and it is absolutely incredible. So once again, the knock is for the look and that's what people want to go for, this is your lens. And I also want to say this, my biggest problem with this lens is actually the price followed by the availability. It's kind of a hard lens to get and it's extremely expensive. Now, as a side note, in defense to Nikon, when you start building lenses with massive lens elements and there's a lot of glass in there, particularly when you're using strange shaped elements, there are three aspheric elements, there are also four extra low dispersion elements, that can start adding to the cost of the lens. So I understand that if you're going to make a lens that has a very limited appeal, you're going to have to spend a lot of money on that. Therefore, the price in the end should be high. I just think it's too high. Coming in at $8,000 is pretty ridiculous. I think if it were priced more into the Otis neighborhood of $4,000 to $6,000, I think they'd have a much better deal, which also leads me to some problems that I have with the availability on this lens. Nikon has actually done this before. It's been quite a while, but they've had a handful of lenses that they produced, and one of the big ones was the original original Noct, which was the f1.2 58 millimeter Noct, they create lenses that they're only going to make a couple thousand copies of. They are going to be very scarce. You'll see them in the catalogs. They're used as kind of the sales pitch. Here is the ultimate lens. It's really hard to get. It's kind of unattainable because it's so expensive. And for some reason, that's going to drive sales on other lenses. And this is just a tactic that I don't really think holds up in the modern day. If you look at what Canon are doing with the RF mount, they're designing some very unique optical lenses that are not astronomically expensive. They're a little more sanely priced. If you look at the 50 millimeter f1.2, which is an outstanding performance lens. In fact, it's one of the best 50 millimeter lenses I've ever used. It's still big and heavy, and it's still kind of expensive. It's $2,000, which is nothing to sneeze at, but it's not coming in at $8,000. There's another lens that Canon has done that is extremely unique that you're not going to find on any other system, and it's the 28 to 70 millimeter zoom lens. It's an f two straight across the board. You're not going to find that on any other system. It's still an expensive lens, but it's also not unattainable. I think it comes in at just under $3,000. This is more of what I would like to see Nikon doing because right now you have this massive gap between their top of the line $8,000 lens and then you get into the $2,000 and up lenses and that's a huge difference between those two. I just think the white whale approach doesn't sit very well with people. There was an interesting experiment that I did when I was using this lens and I was posting stuff on Instagram. It was interesting because if I told people what the lens was, I received all these comments trashing the lens and getting really irritated and upset and I get it, the price tag is offensive. But if I would just post an image and not say what equipment was used, people generally loved the images and thought wow, how did you get that? So there is perception and this white whale approach I just think is a little bit dated right now. Another thing to bear in mind, Nikon did not send this lens to me for review. I rented it with my own money and I think as a rental lens, it's excellent. I wouldn't want to spend $8,000 and have a lens just sit on the shelf and make me feel guilty when I'm not using it. It makes much more sense for me to rent it when I actually need it for something specific and then just kind of let somebody else own it and then just pay to use it when I need it. I would love to know what your thoughts are, so drop me a comment below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.